I am John and welcome to Cycling on a Shoestring. I'm not going to show the regular intro right now, but it's coming up in a moment. It is March the 8th, 2024, and I'm here in Fish Creek Park, a lovely day for bike riding. And I bring up the date because it's relevant to this video, because this is a video two years in the making. Now, let me explain. It was February of 2022. I sat down in front of my computer and I recorded a video, very, very laid back video. And I didn't know if I was going to release it, and I didn't. I didn't put it on my channel. Later that summer, something else happened. I recorded a video wondering if I was going to release it, and I didn't. But you're going to see both of those videos together today, right now. And what brought this video on today is a number of creators on YouTube talking about the troubles with the cycling industry right now, meaning big bike industry is in trouble. Um, some companies are going under, employees are losing their jobs, independent dealers are having issues when just a couple of years ago during COVID, it was boom time, folks. Now, I haven't watched all the videos, but one of the things I'm hearing from these people who know a lot more about the industry than I is that maybe some of these companies have bit off more than they can chew. Maybe they're not making bikes for the average person right now. They put a lot of research and development into high-end bikes that are very, very expensive. I've looked at bikes. There ain't no way I'm buying a new bike right now. It's too expensive, and I like bike riding. You've got to get the average person onto bikes, and these big bike companies sell expensive bicycles. In fact, if you look back at what happened with the, the, the cars, right? Henry Ford saw the average person in cars, and he sold them a good car for a good price and he revolutionized the industry and that's what a lot of the creators on youtube are saying the bike industries have to change because they're losing business now from my standpoint i started looking at it from an e-bike issue and that's why you clicked on this video i see more and more people riding e-bikes and i've made comments about i don't like that um, in other videos on my channel i like to see people riding regular bicycles but if 50% of the people are riding e-bikes right now, I don't think a lot of them are riding Trex or Cannondales or Canyons or any of the big bike companies because they're too expensive. I looked on Amazon this morning, first glance, $5.99 for an e-bike in Canadian dollars. That's what people are riding on bike paths. And that's a huge percentage of the bikes I see on the road right now. So are e-bikes a problem with the bike industry? I think they are. Let me know what you think. I'm going to tell you again at the end of this video, I'm going to show you what I did two years ago in its entirety. And this is the last you're going to see of me sitting right here. But let me know what you think at the end of the video. I may be kind of kicking a hornet's nest here, but I think e-bikes are a problem right now in more ways than one. So let's look at those videos. I was taken out by an e-bike on a bike path yesterday, and I'm pissed. Hi, it's John and welcome to Cycling on a Shoestring out of my shop right now putting some new bar tape on my bike. Having to do this because of what happened to myself and my friend Andre yesterday when we were out riding around town. Um, I'm a little bit hot under the collar about what happened yesterday and it's been a growing problem that I've been noticing lately. I've got lots to say about what happened. This is also what happened to me yesterday went face first into the asphalt because of an e-bike rider. The video you're about to see, it's quite obvious when I recorded it because when I did it, I put the information right at the beginning of the video. And I also say that I never thought I would release it. But I've got more to say on this issue at the end of the video. So please watch it and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Hi there, it's John and welcome to Cycling on a Shoestring. And as you can see, this is a very informal video. And as of this moment right now, 6.25 a.m. on February 2nd, 2022, I don't even know that I'm going to post this video, but I wanted to record it. 
If you're watching it, obviously I've posted it because this is a little bit of a controversial subject and it may bother a few of you, but I don't want it to bother you. Maybe we can come to an agreement here or maybe you can change my mind about something I've been noticing a lot lately. You know, I want my channel to be fun, celebratory of cycling. I want it to be useful as well. And hopefully when I do reviews, it is useful. And you enjoy them. And I, I appreciate you being here. But my question is about the bike industry. And I'm talking about the bike industry when it comes to uh, companies that make bicycles. I just got an email in that kind of spurred on this video from Competitive Cyclist. And it says, launching Santa Cruz's new Heckler. And it's the next Gen E mountain bike. And if you've been bike riding over the last year, year and a half, two years, you've noticed that e-bikes are taking over the roads. I don't know that it's 50% of the bikes I see now, but it's getting pretty darn close. My question is, is this good for the cycling industry? I'm talking about cyclists. I consider myself a cyclist. I ride bikes. I don't ride motorized bikes. And I fear we're getting into a situation where down the road, we're not going to have people riding bikes. They're going to be riding, for all intents and purposes, motorcycles. And my issue is this. I am 57 years old this month. And I see so many young people in their 20s riding electric bicycles. And I would prefer if they were riding bicycles. They're never going to ride a regular bike if they're riding e-bikes right now. And I don't think this is good in the long haul for cycling. Down the road, just think about what happens when professional teams are looking for cyclists and what they've got is people who have been grown up riding e-bikes. I think they're amazing things for people who have physical disabilities, for people who are older to get out. It might be a way of introducing people to cycling. That could be the argument here, but I know that young people, as young people, we always take the easier way out. I always did. As soon as I got my chance to ride a car and to drive a car, I left my bike behind. I just happened to come back at it later on. So what do you think? I'm seeing too many e-bikes on the road. That is my point. I think we need to encourage people to ride bikes, not ride motorbikes like that Santa Cruz email I just got in. What do you think? Change my mind. Have you been thinking the same way I have? Because I don't think this is a good thing for the future of cycling. So obviously, you see, I recorded that in February, and I really didn't think about releasing it until what happened to me yesterday. So what happened? Well, first off, I like to think that I'm pretty responsible on my bike and I'm always looking out and ahead of what's happening on the road because you have to be that way if you're a cyclist. So my friend Audrey and I are riding along at about 25k an hour on a bike path, maybe a little bit less than that, I'd say maybe 20k an hour. Andre hasn't been able to ride much this year. And a guy on a behemoth of an electric bike, we were on the asphalt, came out from behind some trees on a dirt trail, pulled in front of us and decided that he was gonna do a U-turn and he did this and stopped right in front of us. Didn't even look. I had no time to stop. I was 15 feet behind him when he got on the trail. I plowed into the back of his e-bike, which had tires about that wide on them. And I went over my bars and hit my face right here on my shoulder and all of my weight landed on my neck. Thank goodness I was wearing a helmet because I could feel the helmet hit the asphalt. I was bleeding from this. It stopped bleeding now. Andre was behind me, and he didn't have time to stop. He ran into the back of me. And I was pissed off. I was really hot, really hot. This guy, first thing he said was, I didn't see you. No kidding. You didn't look. And that video I did back in February talked about whether we're encouraging to ride bikes. And I said this the other day in another video I did, you know, by promoting electric bikes, are we really encouraging laziness or are we promoting cycling? And I think these things can be of great benefit. But now you have a bunch of people who had never got on a bike before and are out on the pathways. And I said maybe 50% of the bikes are electric. 
I think there's more of them in Calgary than there are of regular cyclists now, by a long shot. I also said in a video the other day, is an e-bike you don't have to pedal really a bike, or is it a motorcycle? And this beast this guy rode away on yesterday, he wasn't pedaling. It had pedals, but it had an accelerator. And I've ridden behind these people at 35k an hour, and they don't know what they're doing. They're a danger out there. I could have been killed or in the hospital after what happened yesterday. And I think this is irresponsible to allow a lot of these things, again, you don't have to pedal them, to be on our bike paths. I see packs of these things out there. I call them pathway locusts because these are inexperienced riders who are putting my life and my safety in danger because they come tearing around corners and they're hanging out around the outside of a corner coming right at me at 35k an hour and I'm pissed about this. I had a pretty sore neck right now. I'm lucky it didn't break my neck. I'll probably be worse tomorrow because it's the second day. But I have a real issue with this. A real issue. I remember years ago seeing electric mopeds that you could ride on the road and didn't need a license for them because they put pedals on them. Well, these are motorcycles on bike paths now. And they're big and they're heavy and they're wide and it's the idiots riding them that are making us unsafe. I said to Andre on the way back to the house, I feel safer on the road with cars than I do on the bike path these days. Because at least people in cars have to have a license and know the rules of the road to drive their car. As I said in the video I recorded back in February, I do not want to be controversial on my channel. And I don't want to piss any of you off. But this needs to be addressed. They're everywhere now. I don't think this is a good thing. I don't think this is good at all. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Please leave your comments below. Tell me what you're experiencing when you're on, out on bike paths. And I do appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Tell me what you think, if, whether you agree with me or not. Because I'd love to hear your thoughts. But at least subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time on Cycling on a Shoestring.